Alexis K's version 2.0 just released and the candy cavity is here. So if you need a little insight into the biome and how everything works around here, this video should be your one-stop guide and also features gameplay from Dirt Block and Dr. Pickle. So without further ado, get that sweet tooth of yours in check and let's get into this. The Candy Cavity is an expansive and sugary new biome that defies both logic and expectations. And though its bizarre nature could be unsettling for first-time explorers, the overwhelming sweetness of this biome brings a sense of strange comfort. Plus, with it being crafted almost entirely from candy, everything is edible, and it offers a visually striking experience. Don't be fooled though, because this is far from a safe one. To get here, you'll need to find a Candy Cavity cave tablet somewhere around the overworld, typically in witch's huts. Use it in a Splunkery table to complete a mini game, and then you'll get your hands on a Candy Cavity cave codex. God, that is a tongue twister and a half. After you have one, use eight papers around it in a crafting table, and you'll have yourself a map to the nearest candy cavity. This unusual biome is believed to have appeared relatively recently in the overworld, likely as a result of sinister magical experiments performed by its native sorcerers, the Licker Witches. But more on them later. Within the candy cavity, the landscape is primarily composed of sugary and candy-like materials, adding to its peculiar charm. With canyon-like generation all around, and layers of sediment composed of different delectables, such as layer cake, chocolate, frosted chocolate, and even cookie shells wedged into the sides of this terrain. And have I mentioned, everything in this biome is edible, even the blocks, though they're not very filling. But besides that, you'll find paths all throughout the cavity made up of rock candy, a new type of stone which comes in 16 different colors, most of which you can see in the giant jawbreaker geodes that you can find around this place. You'll be licking this thing for a while to get through it. Around the cave, you can find different types of flora, and I say flora in very heavy quotation marks because here we have candy floss, little lollipops, sprinkles, and candy canes, both big and small. Plus a lot of these flora blocks have different block states, and you can have even more depth in your builds using them. Not only that, but we have massive mountains made up of ice cream, coming in three different flavors, sweet berry, vanilla, and chocolate. Each one of these can be mined and eaten, and often spawn with a giant sweet berry on top, which you can actually combine with three cake layers and three blocks of frosting to add an all new recipe for cake. Neat. Not only that, huge bars of chocolate sit around this cave as well, looming over you as you explore. Chocolate comes in three variants, regular chocolate, polished chocolate, and chiseled chocolate. And as you can see, the candy cavity makes use of all of these. You can also use regular chocolate along with a glass bottle and sugar to create hot chocolate bottles. Around the place, you'll also find the new peppermint slabs, which come in both large and small variants, as well as tons of variants of huge lollipops. You've got round ones, swirly ones, green moldy looking ones, and they all kind of work as their very own types of tree. Not to mention, this biome does have its own type of tree that is actually growable. Introducing liquor root, and although it doesn't have a wood set, from its trees you can get liquor root itself, liquor root sprouts, and liquor root vines. The sprouts can be bone meal to grow your very own liquor root tree, wherever you want, and its vibe is perfect for spooky builds, which is great with Halloween coming up. Some liquor root trees even house a structure, but we'll get onto that very soon. You'll also find giant soda bottles around the biome, containing the new purple soda liquid. These things are composed of sugar glass, which is a brand new glass for the biome, crafted with two sugar and two peppermint powders, which you can get from mining peppermint blocks. And inside of these bottles, you can find five different variants of gummy rings. But that's not the only place you can find them. Some soda bottles even spill out their very own soda rivers, which have gummy rings floating all throughout them. And a little aquatic animal that we'll get onto soon. Purple soda itself can be bucketed up and even bottled up so that you can drink it. And if it collides with lava, it'll create orange rock candy, which is super duper cool. Sun drops are a new gummy block there around this cave and acts as their primary light source, I believe, blowing and sending rainbows all throughout them. You can find patches of them all over the place. Speaking of patches, these giant donuts, primarily made of the new dough blocks, are covered in frosting and have patches of sprinkles all over them, which are made up of rock candy. If you have an elytra, flying through these things would be like being on the Xbox 360 again. There are ice cream cone stalactites all across the roof of this cave, which have ice cream dripping down constantly. They're made up of the new waffle cookie block, which you can use to make tons of stairs, slabs, and walls. The final generation feature we have here are frost mints. These things spawn around rock candy and sit on the ceiling of these caves, often generating above soda rivers. You can mine them to get the mints themselves, which are quite a cool new slab, but be warned. They have gravity, and if shot with a projectile from up there, I, uh, how, did I, how did I miss that? They'll fall down into a soda river and cause a massive explosion because, you know, Coke and Mentos, or purple soda and frost mints. So just keep them away from soda rivers if you want to use them for decoration. Other than that, there are miniature ice creams that spawn throughout the place Place, and I honestly cannot think of anything else that spawns in this cave whatsoever that I'm going to cover later in this episode. Nothing, nothing at all. With that being said, let's move on to some mobs. Gummy bears can be found around the candy cavity pretty much anywhere, but they'll often be sitting near soda rivers for a particular reason that we'll get on to soon. They come in five different variants and even have baby variants. They drop gelatin on death, which also comes in five different colors because obviously these guys do as well. You've got green, who doesn't have a dad anymore, yellow, blue, red, and pink, even though these two look incredibly similar. Although the real use of gummy bears is 
actually quite hidden. You'd have to look in the advancements or the cave codex to find it out. You can feed these guys any potion in the game. And they'll enter hibernation. They'll hibernate for a decent amount of in-game time that I'm not going to wait for because I am impatient. But once the hibernation's up, they'll find a nearby leaker root tree and start scratching against it, eventually dropping some jelly beans, which will have the potion that you gave the gummy bear imbued into them, allowing you to lengthen the effects of your potions and split them up into different bite-sized meals. As I said before, though, gummy bears will often sit around soda rivers because, well, their natural prey resides within them, apparently. Where, where are they all at? Guys, come out, come out wherever you are. There's one, the Swedish fish. These guys come in the same five color variants that the gummy bears do, and they're actually really cute. You can even bucket them up and keep them as pets. Typically, gummy bears will sit around soda rivers and pounce on these guys, it's eating only the same color as them, because these guys are the natural predators of the Swedish fish. Nom, 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 nom. Look at him eating him. But where this gets a tiny bit disturbing is when you find out that you can smelt Swedish fish into gelatin, the same thing the gummy bears are made of. We just witnessed cannibalism, everybody. Jeez, let's move on. Candy corns are a new mount that can be found around the candy cavity and come in five different styles. To tame them, you'll need a caramel apple, an item I'll tell you how to obtain soon. But once you have them, they'll follow you and you just right-click them a few times, give them about five or six, and then they're tamed. Then all you need to do is pop a saddle on them and hop on their back. And you can ride them around. These guys are super fast and, since they're unicorns, can use their unique builds, aka their horns, to do a dash attack, which will make them go even faster and deal damage to enemies in front of them. And if you couldn't tell, these guys are just kind of fight horses. Yeah, they, they have the same like jumping and everything. But their animations are super duper cool. Now let's move on to some hostile mobs. The gum beeper is a distant relative of the creeper. And when you're in survival mode, these guys will shoot gumballs at you and slowly lose ammo. The gumballs will bounce around, and if you avoid them, it'll put plan B into action, come towards you, and explode, sending their gumballs everywhere. Their sticky balls will be all over the place. These Adventure Time Gumball Guardians drop gumballs on death, and these gumballs can be used for various crafting recipes, but are also edible. The Kaniac is a skeletal maniac who lives in the candy cavity. For some reason, he's just allowed to run loose here. When you're in survival mode and far away from him, he'll come running towards you, flailing his arms around. And if he's too far away from you, he'll jump up. Oh my god, no, that's actually terrifying. Although he is a bit of an idiot with it sometimes. Okay, okay, yep, yep, yep. You're gonna, dude, you're gonna die doing that. You're gonna die in that stupid costume. Oh, he died, okay. Let me run you for his attacks. Pretty much, he leaps at you if you're too far away. And ouch, it does a lot of damage. When he's not leaping at you, he'll be spinning his arms around, dealing as much damage to you with his sharpened claws as possible. If you manage to kill him, he has a chance to drop candy canes. Oh, he actually dropped nothing though. He has a chance to drop candy canes and smaller chance. Come on, come on, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. Guys, guys, to drop a sharpened candy cane, which is what his arms are. This thing's useful in a different craft recipe, but it does four attack damage and has eight attack speed, but will immediately break as soon as you use it. The caramel cube is the slime variant in the candy cavity. These guys come in three different sizes. Large, which you just saw, medium, and small. These guys are just way cuter than the big ones. I love the fact that they added three separate textures so that they are pixel accurate. Not even Minecraft themselves have done that yet. When they take damage, they'll leave some caramel behind, which will slow you down. But when you kill them, they have a chance to drop caramel, which you can surround an apple with to create the caramel apple, which you can use to tame the candy corns. And now for the one you've been waiting for. Let's head over this way. Meet the gingerbread men. I, I just went into a what? Ow. <laughs> Introducing these little robbing bastards. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just, I, I, I didn't get a great experience with these guys to begin with. Why are these guys just like, okay, wait, I they just take fuck. items from, one of them just took an item from my inventory. Wait, 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 they steal shit from you. Yes. The hell? The gingerbread village is a structure that can be found commonly throughout the candy cavity and houses tons of different homes for these gingerbread men. We've got regular gingerbread blocks, gingerbread bricks, frosted gingerbread bricks, and gingerbread one by one doors. That is so cool. I mean, it does make sense. They are tiny. Throughout this village, you'll find the gingerbread men who have tons of different variants and will just wave at you. However, if you damage one, the entire village will come after you. Okay, wait, there's tons of them in here. This is like a mob farm. Yeah, we're just, we're just massacring a village. Oh, wait, no, yeah, I should, probably should mention that. If you kill them, they'll drop gingerbread crumbs, which you can use to make a ton of the gingerbread blocks plus a ton of other cool stuff but we'll get onto that what i was saying is it's really hard not to attack them because they constantly rob you and bring the items that they rob or find and pick up into these gingerbread barrels which have various bits of loot throughout the entire place maybe they're just trying to make some new gear for you that is definitely totally not foreshadowing very subtle foreshadowing on my part but anyway by using the gingerbread crumbs that they drop i'll tell you later on in the video about a fun new block that allows you to create a new genesis of gingerbread men and maybe even an illegal underground gingerbread fighting ring but you know we'll see about that now we're going to cover some of the biggest bads that this biome has to offer. So let's start off with the people who made this biome in the first place. The Liquor Witch. These guys often give you hunger with their magic. And this Hansel and Gretel fan cast can often be found in the Liquor Witch Tower or Treehouse, what, whatever the hell that is. This structure is one of the only places in the Candy Cavity where you can find regular
regular overworld blocks in the form of spruce planks and oak logs and various other bits and bobs. I'm spitting rhymes right now. And the reason for that is it's clearly a buffed witch's hut. And I can't, I can't have to respect it, you know? MTV welcomes my crib. The liquor witch can often be found gazing into their conversion crucible, a block which made the candy cavity like this in the first place. That's right, these guys are the ones responsible for making the candy cavity. Which, I mean, you could kind of guess. They do look like regular witches, just in cosplay. When you're fighting one, they'll use their magic to summon peppermint projectiles and shoot them at you, as well as throwing potions and casting hexes around you. Ow, ow, okay, yeah, that hurts, that hurts, that hurts, stop. Not only that, but these guys have 40 health and deal three attack damage. The main thing you need to worry about is them summoning various different candy mobs to attack you. They can summon the gingerbread men, the gum beepers, the caniacs, anything, or just bouncing projectiles, apparently. This this one doesn't want to seem to summon anything. Oh, no, yeah, that's a caramel cube. Why would you summon the only thing that can't do attack damage? Seriously? Goodbye. When they die, they drop various tad bits from around the cavity and radiant essence, a very powerful new item that I will talk about soon. They also have a 2.5% chance to drop the sugar staff, but only when they're killed by a player. This thing allows you to do their magic, and I will cover it soon, as well as the radiant essence. But if you get one of those, you'll want to pick it up as soon as you can, because if you hear the ground rumbling, you're in serious danger. Introducing the Gumworm. This guy is huge, genuinely the biggest mob that the mod has to offer. Coming in with 150 health and dealing 10 attack damage per bite, this guy's a force to be reckoned with. Plus, if you make two candy cane hooks, an item that I'm going to talk about soon, you can actually, oh, okay, you can actually mount this guy and ride him wherever you want. Oh, oh, okay, oh, he's glitching, he's glitching, he's glitching, and ride him wherever you want. This is insane. Oh my god, there might even be a way for you to summon him wherever you want in the overworld. You know, we'll get onto that. Once you kill this guy, he'll drop sweet teeth. Get, get out of here. No, no, I don't want to deal with you guys. Go away, I'm trying to- Go, trying go, to go, 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 shoot. Shoo! Jeez. God. He'll drop a couple of sweet teeth, which are a powerful new item which can be used to make a sack of sating. Let's cover some items. All right, here we go. The candy cavity is home to a lot of cool items, most of which can be eaten. And as I said before, you can game in gingerbread men and they'll drop gingerbread crumbs, which can be used to craft a variety of items. Use eight gingerbread crumbs in a chest-like pattern and you'll get a ginger barrel. Use four gingerbread crumbs and you'll get a gingerbread block. And if you let gingerbread men collect as much candy as they need, eventually they'll assemble gingerbread armor. Don't, don't question why this gingerbread remains in here. Let's just... Let's just look past that. Each piece of gingerbread armor gives you an extra 10% speed. And the armor itself is basically slightly below iron, but it makes it super handy for traversing around the candy cavity and just your world in general. Plus when paired with the sugar rush effect, you can kind of become Barry Allen in this game. Oh my, oh my God, geez, what? Everything's so saturated, what? Why am I flailing around? What the hell is going on? This reminds me of like in the Minecraft alpha where you'd kind of have multiplayer, kind of not, but it'd just be Steve's running around like this. This is so weird. Aside from that, you could also make the gingerbread doors or even a frosted version of the gingerbread blocks. If you want to cover your gingerbread in frost, Frosting. I guess I'll talk about the sugar rush effect real quick. In order to get that effect, you can either eat way too many sweets in the candy cavity, which really isn't that hard to do. Just look around, they are everywhere. Or if you want it in a more controlled way for a longer period of time, you need to use a brewing stand and imbue a sweet tooth into potions of speed two, which will get you potions of sugar rush. Usually when you get it for eating candy, you get it for about 20 seconds and it wears off after a bit. Let me see if I can make that happen. Come on. Candy, 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 Just candy. keep stuffing your mouth with all these balls. There we go. The effect itself lasts for about 20 seconds seconds, as I said, and allows you to get speed two while time is slowed down for all the mobs around you, allowing you to basically become Quicksilver. Sweet dreams, um, wait, actual, this is actual sweet dreams. This is actually sweet dreams. Oh, thank God it ended. It also, as you could see, saturates the world to an uh, unforgiving amount. But yeah, if you want it in a more controlled way for a longer period of time, make potions of sugar rush using a sweet tooth. Moving on from that, when you mine ice cream, you'll get vanilla ice cream scoops, chocolate ice cream scoops, or sweet berry ice cream scoops. You can use four of those together to create vanilla ice cream. You can actually eat Eat. Or when you combine all the different ice cream flavors with a sweet berry, caramel, and a candy cane, you can make a sundae, which is definitely like one of the best food sources in the candy cavity. Plus, as I said before, using the giant sweet berry, which you can find on top of ice cream mountains, along with three of any of the blocks frosting, three cake layers, you can create cake in an all new way. Who needs all of this boring vanilla crap? So yeah, you can open up an ice cream parlor in Minecraft. Next up, let's talk about caramel. Using eight caramel and an apple, you can make a caramel apple, which as I said before, you can feed to candy corns to tame them. Next up, gelatin. Gelatin is a new edible that can be dropped from gummy bears or gained by smelting Swedish fish. The yellow variant can be combined with sun drops to make rain bounce boots, a brand new armor piece, which allows you to traverse the candy cavity in a bouncy and fall damage free way. Allow me to show you how it's done. Whee! Bounce. As you can see, you leave a little rainbow trail behind you. Oh, oh crap, I felt, I felt. Okay, okay, okay. And if you shift, you don't bounce anymore. And yeah, that's basically it for the basic items. Let's get onto some of the tools you can craft. I kind of already accidentally started. That probably should have been in the next segment. Uh, any, anyway, all right then, let's go. Gumball piles can be combined with iron, iron nuggets, and sugar glass, which you can craft using two sugar and two peppermint powder, which you get from just peppermint and candy okay. canes, to create the shotgun, a new close range weapon, which allows you to fire gumballs at targets and acts like a shotgun. So the closer you are to your target, if I can, 
find one. Hello? Targets. You're around here. There you are. You can be a target. You'll deal more damage. Did he just turn into a fish? He just turned into he just turned into a fish. This thing has four enchants that we'll cover later. Next up, we got the sharpened candy cane, which you get rarely from a caniac. This thing breaks as soon as you hit anything with it, and is useful in a crafting recipe that I'm literally about to get onto, but it also basically allows you to do pre-combat update attacks. So, you know, it's a it's a worthwhile trade-off. But if you're not bothered about that nerd crap, using a candy cane pole, which you craft with three candy canes, three leco root vines, which you can find on leco root trees, and a sharpened candy cane, you can get the candy cane hook, a brand new grappling hook type item, which will allow you to fling yourself around the candy cavity with ease. Or just anywhere you want, to be honest. If you have two of these items, you can also ride the gumworm, which is super duper handy. But having two is also useful for just flinging yourself further anyway. Using three purple soda bottles and a frost mint, you can get three purple soda bottle rockets, which basically act like candy fireworks. They are super neat. I wonder if you can load them into a crossbow. No, you can't. Okay, you can't load them into a crossbow, but they are they are pretty cool. Frost mint can also be combined with two candy canes to create frost mint spears. These things do six attack damage and don't lose durability when you use them as a weapon, but they can be thrown and will freeze any entities at the point of impact, slowly damaging them over time and making them go slower in general. Up next, we have the sugar staff. This thing allows you to mimic some of the liquor witch's moves. If you right click, you can summon peppermint all around you, which do damage in the same way that the Witch can. Or if you shift right click the ground, you can summon a hex, which does area of attack. <laughs> Why am I? Why can I just not speak? Which does area of attack damage around mobs around you. This thing has five enchantments. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this thing has three. Next up, we got the Sack of Satan. You can get this thing by using a Sweet Tooth, which you get from defeating a Gumworm, two Liquor Root Vines, and five Pink Gelatin. And it's actually probably one of the coolest items in this game, because you can fill it with however much food that you want, and it'll continuously auto-feed you so long as you've given it food, allowing you to save tons of inventory space. And you don't even need to think about eating. And then finally, even though there are some more items that I need to cover, but I need to cover blocks before I cover those, Anyway, so here we have music disc fragments, which you can find in structures throughout the candy cavity. You get nine of them, and you can create the music disc for Tasty by Ninny, which sounds like this. Okay, that's everything. So now we're gonna speed run some of the enchantments. Let's get into it. Okay, starting off here with some shotgun enchantments. This thing has four of which are incompatible with each other, but it's not really that big of a deal. Let's start off with targeted ricochet. This makes it so when your gumballs bounce off of a surface or entity, they'll go towards the nearest entity, allowing you to basically give the main bot. <laughs> One that's not compatible with targeted ricochet, though, is triple split, which makes it so when your gumballs hit an entity, Entity, they split off into different gumballs. You can't really see it with this guy. They split off into different gumballs, which, you know, you can kind of see why that makes sense. It'd be really overpowered if there were a ton of foaming gumballs. Oh my god, I look so cool holding this thing. Next up, we got Bouncy Ball, which makes it so that pretty much gumballs only have so many bounces before they stop moving. This enchantment comes in three levels, and each enchantment gives an extra two bounces to your gumballs, allowing them to go for further distances and hit more mobs. And then after that, probably the most overpowered one, Explosive Flavor. This one makes it so you shoot one large gumball, which turns out to be an explosive. And the thing is, when combined with one like triple split, you can make three explosive gumballs that are going to go around an area. So if you're fighting off a ton of mobs, this thing's really, really handy. How about you have a taste of your own medicine, yeah? How about you have a taste of your own medicine? How do you like it? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, let's move on. Got a bit salty there. After that, we have the candy cane hook, which has three enchantments. Starting off, we have far flung, which comes in three separate levels, and each level makes it so you can swing your hook even further, allowing you to travel greater distances. After that, we have sharp cane, which allows you to use your hook as more of a weapon as well, making it do more attack damage with an extra three per level. And then finally, we have straight hook, which allows you to launch your hook in one straight direction instead of it being affected by gravity. Don't be fooled though. If it can't hook onto anything, it will still fall down. But if it can, you can swing yourself wherever you'd like. And the best thing about that is you can have all of those enchantments on one hook. So you can basically have a maxed out one. And finally, we have the sugar staff. This thing has five enchantments. First of all, we have spell lasting, which comes in three levels and makes it so your hexes last an extra couple seconds per level. So, uh, you're after no how how you how you bit up oh. Okay, yeah, no, I get it, I get it. After that, we have Peppermint Punting, which I'm actually gonna showcase last because I, I don't really like it. Humongous Hex, which comes in two levels and each level makes it so your hex is an extra block wide. Look how big this thing is. After that, we have Multiple Mint, which makes it so when you summon Peppermints with this thing, you get an additional Peppermint. You can be just surrounded by your Peppermint Minions. <laughs> and then finally, we have Seek Candy, which I don't really think works very well with Peppermint Punting, which is why I'm showcasing it last, but let me show you how this thing works. Basically, you summon your Peppermints with a right click and they all go to Towards whatever mob you're looking at. So yeah, you can give your peppermint same bot too. Yeah, fuck you, Kaniac. And then let me show you what peppermint punting does. When you have this thing on it, it basically makes it so they barrel roll in front of you instead of surrounding you, which is quite cool, but I just can't really see this being more useful than the aimbot one. <laughs> but anyways, that's all the enchantments. Now it's time for me to show you some neat blocks. Introducing the conversion crucible. This flashy new cauldron is the reason that the candy cavity is like this in the first place, because it has the unique ability to, when paired with a unique new candy, transmute one biome into another, which, you know, explains why everything's made of candy. To make one, you need one radiant essence, a cauldron, and seven golden blocks, or alternative 
alternatively, you could just rob one from a liquor witch. But for the magic to really happen, you need a biome candy, or what, what's it actually called? A biome tree. To craft one, you need one candy cane, two radiant essence, and four rock candies of any color. When you get it, it'll be unbound. And uh, I need to head to a different biome to do this, but this is a candy cavity only world. So... Oh, whoa, how'd I get here? Pretty much what you'll want to do. To bind this thing to a biome, you need to be starving in the biome that you want, and then eat it. That is literally how you do it. You need to be on the brink of death, and then it'll be bound to whatever biome you picked. I don't know why I picked the nether waste. It was just the closest one. And then simply throw it in. Oh, oh my. Okay, well, I don't know why it's asking for bedrock. I will be completely honest with you, but I'm in creative, so I can give it I can give it that. Usually, it'll ask you for regular items like netherrack or mylium, but at the end, it'll ask for a more expensive item. In this case, it's netherite ingot. In the overworld's case, it'll probably be like a diamond, but in some of the Alex's Caves cases, it'll probably be like a drop from one of the hardest mobs to kill in that biome. But once you get it in there, throw it in, and it'll start converting. Suddenly, you have a nether waste. I don't actually know why it did bedrock. That's probably a glitch. But if we go onto F3, we can actually see that we are in the nether waste biome. So yeah, welcome back nether reactors. Let's move on to the next block. A little arena here. The confection oven is a fun and useful block added in Alex's Caves 2.0. Using it, and as long as there's any rock candy color under it, you can create team-based battles with gingerbread men. These guys will fight it out, and you can, you know, have bets and stuff on your servers. Not only that though, but these guys have all the same functionality as regular gingerbread men. So if you had a ginger barrel, they'd still place blocks and stuff inside of it. So if you set up something like this, you could have an automatic item collection system that could, like, rival the LAs. Even be better than them. But my favorite bit is that you can just make them endlessly fight, so long as it's powered by redstone. Anyway, let me show you how you craft this thing. In order to make one, you need a smoker, two candy canes, four gingerbread crumbs, which you get from killing gingerbread men, one redstone dust, and one radiant essence. And then boom, you've got a confection oven. And yeah, um, let me leave these guys to fight. That's pretty cool. The final block that I'm gonna showcase today is called the Gob Thumper. This thing is a reference to Dune, I'm pretty sure, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure because I haven't actually seen Dune myself. But basically, you put it down anywhere in the overworld. That's right, not just the candy cavity. And it'll summon a gumworm. Um, allowing you to have an easy way to fight one and get sweet teeth or be able to ride them anywhere you want. Okay, this guy's glitched. He's, he's kind of stuck in a thing, but, but you get the idea. Imagine pulling up to like some SMP war on the back of a gum one. That'd be so sick. And yet you can summon them anywhere in the overworld. So the world's your oyster, really. Okay, just to wrap this video out, I'm going to cover every single one of the enchantments and then I'm going to give you guys some cool little bits of trivia. So let's get into this. Pure imagination, enter the candy cavity. Yellow brick road, walk on a road made of rock candy. The dark chocolate tower, discover a liquor which tower atop a huge liquor root tree. The secret ingredient, obtain radiant essence by slaying a liquor witch. Biome reactors, obtain a conversion crucible. Look, mom, no world edit. Use a conversion crucible to transmute a biome. Welcome back, nether reactors. Create a nether biome in the overworld by using a conversion Version crucible. Choco block. Eat an entire block of chocolate. You weirdo. Tis the season. Eat a candy cane. Caniac no more. Slay a caniac. I found the coin slot. Slay a gum beeper. Hooked on a feeling. Craft a candy cane hook. And I'm all out of gum. Craft a shotgun. Walk without rhythm. Craft a gob thumper. Dessert power. Use candy cane hooks to mount a gum worm. The cinnamon spice must flow. Defeat a gum worm in battle. Freaky item. Craft a sack of Satan to continuously keep you well fed. Sweet, sweet, speeding up. Obtain the sugar rush effect by eating too much candy in the candy cavity. Oh, little town of gingerbread. Find a gingerbread town. You're a monster. Slay a gingerbread man for its crumbs. Tiny battle in a block. Craft a confection oven. Run, run as fast as you can. Obtain all the pieces of gingerbread armor. Carbonated swim. Take a dip in some soda. Explosive combo. Be nearby when a frost mint falls into purple soda. Spearmint. Craft a spear from frost mint and candy canes. Gummy gumbo. Capture a Swedish fish in a bucket. <laughs> Where's Goopy? Create gelatin by cooking a Swedish fish. No slime, no service. Craft rain bounce boots and bounce as you please. Life-saving collection. Obtain gummy rings in all five colors. Unwrapped candy. Obtain caramel by slaying a caramel cube. Easy like a Sunday morning. Craft a Sunday and try not to enjoy it too much. A day at the fair. Craft a caramel apple. Rainbows and candy corns. Tame a candy corn by feeding it a caramel apple. Dark in walking gummy bear. Feed a gummy bear a potion and watch it slip into hibernation. I'm not a fan of the red flavor. Obtain a jelly bean from a gummy bear scratching against liquor root after its hibernation. Whoa, that's all of the advancements. And that basically brings us to the end of this video. There's a couple more tidbits that I want to talk about, but here we go. If you play music around a gummy bear or a gingerbread man, they'll start dancing. And uh, what the hell is that dance move, dude? What are you doing? There are various name tag Easter eggs in the mod, especially for the gingerbread men, but I don't really know them all. I just know that one of them is definitely Alex himself, and some of the other ones are more like not so specific community members. Originally, the law for the biome was going to consist of an ancient civilization who had a hunger crisis, and as a result of that, tempered with magic or some strange machine to create an endless supply of food. Little did they know that would go horribly wrong and accidentally turn them into the very thing that their sweet tooth was craving. But yeah, I, I kind of I appreciate that they stuck with the- Oh, hello, gum one. Whoa, 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 whoa! I appreciate that they stuck with the liquor witch thing, because I just prefer it kind of building on regular Minecraft stuff. When purple soda collides with lava, it creates orange rock candy. Pretty cool! To get to this place, you need to find a candy cavity cave code 
objects often found within witches' huts in swamps. Which makes sense, you know, witches are like the top of the food chain here. Except for the gum worm, but you know, that's an entirely different category in itself. There is a secret item called the Alex Meal, which is a combination of gingerbread men and some of the primordial cave stuff. A bit weird looking, I'm not gonna lie, but I wonder if there's a way you can get it in game. For now, the only thing that you need to know is that you should like and subscribe for more content just like this. And if you like Minecraft modding or Minecraft mods in general, make sure to join my Discord. The link will be in the pinned comment below. Anyways, hopefully this wasn't too rushed, and hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know your favorite new addition in Alex's Cave Suite update in the comments below. And again, please do like and subscribe for more content like this, because it's the best way to help out the channel. And I'm trying to make this my career, so please, I really, I really, I really beg, I beg. Anyways, with all that being said, thank you. I've been G Outros, and I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy the candy cavity, and bye-bye!